So on working with um, MIPS and assembly language, um, there is this idea that's important to understand. It's, it's, it's this concept of um, this program counter. So what you can see is we have this basic program where initially we're just doing a couple of ads. And then the NLP operation is essentially just something to use up cycle time. Um, just a simple way of putting a few instructions um, in, into your code. And there's a need for it, but we'll, we can, we can v revisit that later. So this program counter, notice that we have registers 0 all the way up to 31. So we have 32 registers. We also have these other two registers, PC, high, and low. Now, the PC is the program counter. And right now, you can see that the program counter is um, sitting at 004 with all zeros after that. So that when we run our program, let's go ahead and do that. When we run our program, and maybe I can zoom out of here and turn off this magnifier for a minute, you'll see that the instruction sits, first instruction sits at, at uh, what's essentially something that looks like uh, four with five zeros. So well, let's just call it 400,000, then 400,000, 4, 8, 12, right? C is 12, 16, 20, and so forth. So since each instruction can be encoded as a 32-bit word, right? Each instruction is encoded as a 32-bit word, as we see here. Um, that means that we need four bytes for each instruction. So we go 0, 4, 8, um, 12, 16, 20, right? 1, 4 is a hex 20. So for this bit of code that we have here, there's a jump, or actually it's a branch, if not equal to. So notice that A0 and A1 are being compared, and then we're going to jump to a line of code. We've put a zero into A0, we've put a one into A1. Since they are not equal, we can expect there to be a jump. So if we go ahead and assemble it, and step, step, and let's, there are a few other instructions, but notice now that we're at the branching part where they're, if it's not equal, if they're not equal, we're going to jump. Well, if you look over at A0 and A1 at this point, A0 is a zero and A1 is a one, right? As the green highlights the most recent, recently changed register. So it's going to jump. Now the program counter is sitting at a one zero, which is a hex 16. Let's just call it a um, it's 16. Now, when this instruction jumps, watch this one more step. Notice how we jumped to um, 2C, right? That's the address where the instruction is located. It's at 2C. Now, look at the program counter. The program counter was loaded up with a value of 2C. And the program counter is what determines what the next instruction is. Um, so I want to spend a few minutes talking about the program counter and try to get a bit more intuition as to how it's built and what it's doing for us. So now there's a circuit here that I want us to build and I want you to build hands on. It's going to give us some intuition um, as to how a, a program counter works. So go ahead and um, if you're following along, what you're going to do is go over into Logisim and you're going to open that up and we're going to build a circuit. If you don't have Logisim, if you go to our shared, uh, our shared Google Drive, you will find Logisim and Mars, right? Both the jar and an EXE version of Logisim is available. So if you're on a Mac, you can open up the jar. And if you're on Windows, you can open up either one of those, the EXE or the JAR. Um, so we're going to open that up and we're going to start building um, this simulation. So here are the components. Now, there will be a constant, there's going to be a number that we are going to um, want to bring into an adder. 
so that we can do some addition because a program counter increments by four. So we want some mechanism for kind of incrementing every time there's a clock pulse, we want to increment by four. So um, I could do this a couple of different ways. Uh, let's select the cursor and if I want to put the value of four, I could do something like this where I have um, four different bits uh, or at least let's see one two and four I would need three and I could fool around with this and then have these three bits right that's a seven that's a four I could fool around with this and have those three bits and use that to generate a constant value of four that will be added to um, to my current value of my program counter what I'm going to do is take that one single input right now it's set up for one bit I'm going to change that to four and what that allows me to do is instead of having four separate inputs, I kind of grouped them together so that I can manipulate this in a modular way. Now, what does this do? It's just nothing but a stream of ones and zeros that I have control over, right? So my output is set up for one single bit output. I'm going to change that so that it works with four bits. Now, if I connect my input and output, that's all it's, if you see this, right? If I change this to maybe what is that? One, two, four, eight. That's an eight. So the input and output are just simply reflections of one another. And don't forget that initially my output was circular, but when I changed it to eight bits, it expanded. Looks like it might be a rectangle, but notice the softer edges. So I know that that's kind of receiving or it's the output. And then this one has those um, 90 degree edges as our original input did before we changed it to four bits. So that's how I can tell the input versus the output. Um, so what can we do next? Um, I'm going to need a means for adding four to each value of my program counter. So you're going to have to take an adder and, and I'm also going to bring in a value of four. And my adder over here, notice, let's zoom in. At the bottom here, I can zoom in to a 200% maybe. That'll make it a little bit larger. If you hover the cursor, it will tell you that that is an input, one of the numbers to add. That's an input, one of the numbers to add. And then there's a carry in and a carry out. And then there's the output of the sum. And this is an eight bit adder. And so I can change that if I wanted to add four bits or 12 bits or all the way up to 32 bits at a time, I could do that with this adder. So if I take this, um, I have four pins coming into an 8-bit adder. So I'm going to go ahead and change this so that it's not four, but rather it's eight. Now, how does this adder work? If I take, I'm gonna do a control C copy and a control V paste, just so that you get a sense of what's going on with the adder. And since he's delivering an 8-bit output, I'm going to change this to eight. Connect this. Now, if I add, say, a, a 2 and a 2, notice that there's a 4. If I add a 3 and a 3, let's see, 1, 2, 4, this is a 6. Um, let's do this, 0, 0, 1, 2, 4, and 8, and a, let's make that a 2. Notice that over here we get a 10. So our adder is adding these bits together to give us an output. So the adder does what we'd expect or what we wanted to do at least. Now there's another element that I'm going to use, um, a register. So the register is a memory element. So I'm going to use this right 
here, let's see, DQ, that's a flip-flop, let's use this one here. So I'm going to use this register, and how many bits are we set up for? Eight data bits, right? Notice that as you select on each one of these components, the instance variables um, will reflect kind of the current state. So that's a, a pin, input output pin, this one's an adder, and then this one here is a register. So this register is what I want to use um, to help us continue building our program counter. So um, let's continue on. So I have my program counter and I have an output and I'm going to, let's see, wrap this around. I'm going to get rid of this for now, or at least break the link. And I'm going to take the result of this value. And then I'm going to use that as the input for my, uh, my register. So my register is going to act as a device for holding the current um, state. So what I have right now going into this register is this value here, which is a one, two, four, eight. Let's change that to a four. And that four is coming in. This right here is a zero currently because I've not put anything into my register. So I have a four up here and a zero here. And that four and zero should be what's here at the output. And it is one, two, four. Now, in order for me to release the value that's currently coming in um, right here, like if I want to look at what's coming in, I could do that. I know that what's going in is going to be my four. So that four is sitting here and that much is true. And if I look on the other side of this, I have a zero. So on one hand, I have, on the one side I have zero, and on the other side over here, I have a four. So this register is holding on to the four at the input, but it won't release that four until I, number one, I'm going to have to enable it. And number two, I'm going to have to send it a clock pulse. And when that clock comes in, it's going to release the value that's there at the input. So let's look at a pulse that we can send it. And so we have that. And what else do we have? I want to make sure it's enabled. So I need to put um, a value into this to enable this. So I'm going to give it a one to enable it. Now, when I hit this clock pulse, this four that's here should show up at the output. So let's do a single pulse. So that's a clock pulse. And now we have a four at the output and that four went through and that four plus another four gave us an eight over here at the output. This eight, which is coming around here is sitting as we can see at the input. So the eight is just waiting um, to be clocked in. So the value that we see up top here, we see that there's a four. That four um, is at the output here as shown, but we have an eight that's here at the input. That eight won't, right? That eight right now currently sits at the D input, the D pins, the data input. Q is the output. When I send this a clock pulse, I get an eight there at the output. 
So now that 8 is at the output, and I've added 4 to it with my adder. So I have a 8 and a 4, and then I get a f and 12 at the output. So that clocks around that 12, and that 12 is sitting here waiting for me to send another clock. There's my 12, and that 12 just kind of... So you see what's going on. I'm just adding um, 4, that value that plus four value comes in and sits and waits until the next clock pulse. Um, so I can go ahead and change my um, simulation so that the ticks are enabled at a frequency of one hertz or once per second, one cycle per second. So let's do a control K to enable the ticks. And you'll see that once every second, 14, 18 that's a 22 so you can see um, 36 rather there plus four more plus four more so we're just updating this so um, let's give these out let's give these uh, um, some labels let's give these um, devices some labels I'm going to go ahead and stop the ticks now if I want to reset there is a pin here that will clear um, so I'm going to make sure that I have the ability to reset let's see that is facing east so I'm going to make it face north just for convenience and I'm going to go here and tap it to the zero or the clear now, when I hit this, that five zero should then now be zeroed out. And the output is a zero and there's a four. If I pulse it once, um, right, I have a four and a four and I end up with an eight. So I can always reset my output. All right, so let's give these some labels for completion. Um, first thing is the 8-bit adder. I'm going to select it with that cursor and not the poker. And let's see. That was my adder which is doing the arithmetic. So in order for me to give it a label, I'm just going to select the text option here and I'm going to call this my 8-bit adder. Select the cursor and I'll move this into position. So, but the others, um, such as this right here, it has a label for, as an option. Um, and I'm going to call this my uh, register. And it is an 8-bit register. Then um, this here, it's just a 4. So I'm going to call this a constant four. Now, I'm going to change the label's position so that it's north. So now it sits up top. So I have my four, my register, my eight bit adder. And this here essentially is my program counter output. My program counter output. And it's sitting here and its label location is on the east. I'll put it on the south side. And um, I no longer need to kind of observe the inputs here. I'll get rid of that. And I don't need to see the outputs here. I have this. I'm using that as a means of clear um, or reset. So when your program needs to start all over, when you first boot up a program, you're starting at the lower addresses, and then you just kind of keep incrementing. So 
I'm going to reset or boot or clear and I'll put that on the south side um, this is my clock input and this is my pin that says enable so I'll call that enable and if I want to disable this register altogether I could just set that to zero so now if I want a single tick it's a control K you should see the output which is currently at 4 it will continue to add if we do this right so that's 8 that's 12 and so if I keep doing this that will continue to go up by 4 so that this package as a whole is my um, my 8-bit counter uh, also considered kind of my simulation of my program counter 8-bit counter or program counter And so one of the important things that's going to be revealed um, that's going to be connected to the hardware and the software is that your program counter is always immediately sitting with the next value, right? The next subsequent instruction. So while you're completing one instruction, your PC is set to take in the next instruction because soon as you hit the clock, and it takes in one instruction that value plus four is always sitting there ready for the next instruction this value here the program counter output is a number that then gets presented to memory let's go ahead and clear this um, so that's clear and that's a four sitting out here so this number here um, program counter value is currently set to say four um, then it goes to eight then it goes to twelve this number this four eight twelve you can think about this as indices or, or rather an index into an array it's clicking out the value at four eight twelve but instead of an array we're actually working with kind of an array of bytes um, but we're going every four because that's the length of a word so that's what your program counter is doing.